Selamat pagi. Good morning to one and all. I'm indeed honoured to speak at the third Asia-Pacific Rainforest Summit. The theme, protecting forests and people supporting economic growth, is a pertinent challenge that the region has to address, particularly in the face of climate change. The forests of Asia and the Pacific make up about 18% of global forest cover. Primarily regarded as carbon sinks, forests also host a rich biodiversity and sustain the livelihoods of millions. Curbing deforestation and protecting existing forests are instrumental in the fight against climate change and the achievement of Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs. Singapore would like to join the region in solidarity to reaffirm our support for sustainable forest management. There is vast carbon mitigation potential that the forests in the Asia-Pacific region can contribute if the forests are managed sustainably. I'm encouraged that some advances have been made on the reducing emissions from deforestation and forest degradation program, or RED+. The adoption of the Warsaw Framework for RED+, is a step in the right direction in making RED+, an actuality. Countries must now focus on implementing the program to preserve forests and the carbon stored in these sinks. Since independence, the development of Singapore has been based on the principle of sustainability. We moved heavy industries away from the populace, clean up our rivers, and ramp out our public sanitation efforts. We also balanced our urban landscape with parks and gardens to provide shade, cool and fresher air, and nurtured healthy ecosystems for our native biodiversity. Indeed, as I was speaking to His Excellency, the Minister from Brunei, he made the remark that Singapore doesn't have rainforests, but we create forests. Despite being a highly urbanised city-state, more than 40% of Singapore is covered with greenery. Our forests in our four nature reserves are managed for conservation, research, recreation and education. To make Singapore a livable and environmentally sustainable city, we have implemented several initiatives to evolve Singapore from a garden city to a city in a garden. But these efforts alone are not enough for us to keep ahead of the challenges of climate change. We have to step up efforts in climate action. This means keeping track of our emissions for accounting obligations and supporting credible certification schemes. Tracking emissions as land use change over time ensures that our nature reserves and other nature areas continue to be a valuable carbon sink. We have been monitoring and reporting on greenhouse gas emissions and removals from the land use, land use change and forestry sectors, or LULUCF for short, since 2013. Initial results have shown that LULUCF contributed to a reduction of 0.5% of Singapore's total greenhouse gas emissions. The certification of forest products is also a critical step towards sustainable forest management. As consumers for wood products, especially processed products such as paper and pulp, we want Singaporeans to be environmentally conscious green buyers. Such a behavioural movement requires the support of certifying bodies. The Singapore Green Label Scheme has helped to guide Singapore's consumers when they purchase a product. This in turn encourages producers to adopt sustainable practices during production. In January last year, the Singapore Environment Council or SEC launched a holistic 
green labelling category for paper and pulp products, which encompasses peat land management and fire prevention standards as part of its criteria. Companies with such certified products are required to have their entire supply chain audited against this criteria. To walk the talk, the Singapore government launched the public sector taking the lead in environmental sustainability initiative in 2006. Public sector agencies are encouraged to put in place measures that encourage energy efficiency, water efficiency and recycling. One of the measures includes the requirement for agencies to procure white printing paper that is accredited with the Singapore Green Label. To address climate change, we need to mobilise climate action on all fronts, and this goes beyond forest conservation. Given Singapore's vulnerability to the effects of climate change, we have committed under the Paris Agreement to reduce our emissions intensity by 36% from 2005 levels by 2030, and to stabilise our emissions with the aim of picking around then. We are committed to meeting our pledge and we are on track to meet our 2020 commitments. Singapore is also strengthening our resilience and adaptive capacity and integrating climate change measures into our long-term policies, strategies as well as planning. This would involve significant investments in infrastructure. We also leverage biodiversity to increase our resilience against climate change effects, like conserving our mangroves and coral reefs that help in carbon sequestration and protect our coastline. Singapore will also implement a carbon tax in 2019 that will provide the price signal to catalyse economy-wide behavioural changes to prepare our businesses to be more energy and carbon efficient and transition our economy to a low carbon future. Singapore also designated 2018 as our year of climate action to rally our citizens, businesses and communities to take action to reduce our carbon footprint and fight climate change. As the ASEAN Chair this year, we will work with ASEAN countries to take climate action. Singapore will convene a special ASEAN Ministerial Meeting on Climate Action or SAMCA in July this year, the 10th of July to be exact. So you could put that down in your diary. We will also hold a back-to-back -back expanded SAMCA with ministers from China, Japan, the Republic of Korea and the UNFCC COP current and future presidents from Fiji and Poland respectively. These meetings will serve as a platform for constructive dialogue and send a strong signal on the region's commitment to the Paris Agreement. As the chair of the ASEAN Working Group on Climate Change, Singapore has been working on the implementation of capacity building programs and technical exchanges in the region in areas such as adaptation and mitigation. Last October, Singapore and the UNFCC organised a workshop on carbon pricing as part of the collaboration between ASEAN and UNFCC's Collaborative Instruments for Ambitious Climate Action Initiative. Let me conclude. Climate change is a global problem. It can only be tackled effectively if all countries take climate action across all sectors. Current NDCs do not bring us to a future that is consistent with the goals of the Paris Agreement. It is estimated that the world's forests absorb about a third of anthropogenic CO2 emissions. Forests play a critical role in glo global efforts to address climate change. I am indeed heartened to see representation from government, research, civil society and private sectors from across Asia-Pacific gathering at this summit to discuss this critical issue today. 
We all need to work together to preserve our environment for our future generations. I would like to thank the Indonesian government for hosting us here in Jakarta and the Australian government for supporting this event. I wish all of you a most lively and constructive discussion ahead. Terima kasih. Thank you.